All right, I think it's time to answer some of the internet's questions and give you guys a bit of an update on what's going on and have some lunch. So, yeah, let's do it. And no, this is not clickbait. There is an issue with this thing. Didn't bring any tinder shreds. Whoops. Let's do it the uh, old fashioned way. So the purpose of this video is to, as I said before, give you a little bit of an update and also to tell you what's going on with this thing. So what I did is I put up on my Instagram a Q&A, we've got to send in a bunch of questions and we're going to hit the ground running by answering them. Somewhere in this episode there is a code word. Make sure you comment that code word down below on YouTube to win a copy of my cookbook. Okay, I get this one all the time. This one's from Simos24. How is the bush wraps held up? Would it leave paint fade in different parts where it isn't on? Uh, I can't see any paint fade. The, the bush wrap spits and the non-bush wrap spits look exactly the same to me. Um, it's held up, I mean the the bush wraps itself is getting pretty tired. It's nearly three years old. It's only supposed to go in there for one year. It's the Cape, it's the cheapest one, but it is pretty knackered because it's three years old and it's been through hell. I mean, I'm not gentle on my paint at all. So um, if they had the better ones when I put this on, I would have got it done. If, they, if I could have got the 10 year one done in Perth, I would have, got, would have put it on. But bush wraps is in Queensland, so I couldn't get the car wrapped fully. So yeah, that's, that's the, the long and short of it. It's great, I highly recommend it. I recommend it to all my friends. Heaps of my friends have bought it and they're stoked with it. Um, and I will be replacing it with their like five year one soon because I can actually get that put on here. If anyone has any recommendations for a good place to get this thing wrapped, let me know. Um, I'm just trying to find a new, new supplier or new, new fitter. When are you getting a real Land Cruiser like a Troopy as a Calvin? Uh, never. Actually, no, nah, I would totally have like a chopped 300. Yeah. Will your Prado still be the 10 year tourer with the new Prado coming out? Yes, to answer your question. And I will be actually doing, I'm gonna film a review on the new Prado, and well, not a review, I haven't seen it, I haven't driven it. But my thoughts on it, on what's coming out in 2024. Um, so I'll, that will come up, that'll be on this week. Bonus episode, not part of, not normal programming, but yeah, it will be up this week. Streaky or Shortcut Bacon from JLS47. Oh, you're joking, right? It's gotta be streaky or nothing. Um, how do you plan for what you pack on trips, food, gear, clothes, etc. by Riser Blacks? Lists on my phone, lots of experience, and there's a video last week that ran through it. The story down under, any regrets on upsizing the tyres to 285s? No, not at all. I think the 285s do really well. Ronnie will tell you at any opportunity he possibly can that if you put 33s on a car with this engine and gearbox, it doesn't work. I don't know why he found that, because uh, mine, mine clicks into sixth fine. It's not as good at clicking in a sixth, but once you're kind of used to it, it's fine. I get really good fuel economy, and it doesn't sit in sixth when I'm towing, but I don't want it to sit in sixth when I'm towing. I want it to sit in fifth, so it sits in fifth. So yeah, no, I've got no regrets to own a 285s. Um, yeah, it does use more fuel, but, I, but it's really capable. In fact, I was just driving along the beach today and uh, found a bogged Pajero with standard tyres and it was just the fact that I had a tyres and a lift that made me be able to drive around them, pull them out, no worries, like it's so capable with that little bit more clearance. Update on the 10 year tour goal, is it tracking as expected? Yeah, it's going really well. Pro some products have failed, some products have been replaced, but this setup here, the back of this car, doesn't work for me anymore. I've got two kids and a dog that's 40 plus kilos. Fred's sitting in there, he's not, he's not happy for long periods of time. He fits and I can take him to the park and I'll take him like down south or you know, an hour or two, but I don't, I don't want to drive to Broome with him in there. <sighs> not to mention the company that built this system um, have, ch have changed and merged with another company um, and the systems you can buy now are better and you can't buy this system or with this material and that kind of thing. So I'm doing a 10 year review on something you can't even buy. So, 
I don't know. You tell me. Am I allowed to? Am I allowed to rip this whole system out and start from scratch? It'll be built by the same guy. It'll be built with similar stuff, it, but it will be a completely different setup and it will afford me a lot more room and I'll be getting rid of something really substantial. So look, you tell me in the comments, is it okay for me to change that? I, I built this when it was just me and Sam knowing we would have a kid at some point and now three years later, we've got two. And yeah, it's, everything's very different and my needs are very different. And the main reason that my needs are so different is because we have a camper trailer. I don't need an 80 and a 96 liter fridge. Scott Rutherford, 63, um, where do you sit with a, with a, where does Fred sit? Yeah, exactly, with family, family away. Oh, the, and that was Off-Road Crusader um, who asked me if the 10 year tour was going well. How much can you open the door of the Prado with the bike rack on? Uh, not at all but the bike rack drops flat. So I've got one of those ISI bike racks, which are just bulletproof, and it, it folds down with the bikes on it. Um, and I can open the, the door completely. Charlie Walk, would you ever see yourself in a new hybrid Prado? Yeah, 100%. I'd love, I've got this thought, and I don't know how to do it, and I don't know how badly it would void the warranty. But I've always thought, how cool would it be if you could tap into the hybrid system to use for your runaway camping accessories? So they run a 48 volt hybrid system, if you had like a 12 volt step down and you could just access the, the hybrid battery in your car, that would be so cool. Uh, I'd, yeah, if anyone can tap into that and like have solar compatible, have 96 volt solar panels and stuff so you could charge it, man, I'd be all over that. Fox Hunt Error, you need a collaboration with Wild Heart Hunter from New, Ze New Zealand? 100% agree, it will do. Now I've cut the name of this one off by accident. Since the Prado and the FJ Cruiser are related, is the FJ a real cruiser? No. What shits you about other campers and how do you avoid people being a dickhead? I don't know who that's from, but thank you. Um, just rubbish, rubbish noise, uh, driving fast around kids. I always say, if, you wanted, if you've got a real need for speed, go to Lanceland, go for a fang around the dunes, get all the rooster tails you want, go for, go for your life, couldn't care less. If you're on an empty beach and you decide to just launch and there's no one around, I don't care. I don't care. Do it below the tide line. Couldn't care less. You're only endangering yourself. But it's when people glorify it, post it on the internet and um, do it around families and kids, that really kills me. I remember seeing recently, there was a thing on like Current Affair or some crap. I saw on, on Instagram, these people getting annoyed at someone doing a donut on an empty beach. And I was just like, I don't care if someone does a donut on an empty beach. But it was some Karen sitting miles away filming it and I was like, that person's not hurting anyone and they're not posting on the internet, you are. You're just being annoying. Like I, I really, I think people need to calm down about some of that stuff. I think people get over the top about, you know, oh, you, you know, it's hooning or whatever. You're like, mate, you're not hurting anyone. Um, really, that, that really doesn't bother me, uh, but litter, generally being a dickhead, leaving camp, ch camp chairs and tents and stuff in the bush, that, no, no way. Silver Fox 88, best brand shovel and when are we getting fire to fork ones? Uh, old army shovels are the best, or just any long-handed. Uh, Fisker's shovels are pretty good actually, I think. I think Fisker's, yeah, they've got like a composite handle. They're good. Outdoor survival, what would be your ideal camping weather? This, it's like 17, 18 degrees at the moment. Maybe like 25 during the day would be perfect. 10 at night and big fire, clear, cool and crisp and clear. Established 1982. What's happening to your number five trailer? Bro needs some more limelight. I just haven't needed to use it because I've got the camper. Uh, the Cub has been so fantastic and like why would I take a, a box trailer when I've got a beautiful camper trailer? But don't worry, it's fine. It's living its life. Um, it needs new tires and it probably needs a new paint job to be honest. I mentioned on your website that you're changing your roof rack lights. Uh, the Rock 20s I've got on there. Why and what to? Why? Because they leak. What to? I'm looking at a few different options. It's a size issue and I'd like them to be, if I could possibly get them slightly warmer than the white of these, I would like that. Ryan Lennon Travels, anything in the Prado you wish you did differently and want to change? Yes, the rear setup. The rest of it is great and the, and the lights. I have already changed the winch, so I'm now running a Runver winch, 13 XP. Um, I paid paid for that, not sponsored. I can say whatever I want about it. Um, the old one failed eventually, it just wore out. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna give this one a go. 
no idea what it's like yet. It's it pulls like a winch so far. Jenna 350, cast iron versus spun steel. Pros and cons. Spun steel's better. I don't have any cast iron in my car. Pros, pretty much everything. Cons, slightly harder to season if you buy a cheap one. But it's lighter, 75% lighter, it transfers heat beautifully, uh, doesn't crack, it's just great. Jaden Peppelfin, how are the solid Technics products holding up for fire camp cooking? The best, the best products, best pans I've ever used. If you want something premium, get a Solid Technics pan. They are the bomb. Make recommendations and tips for using an Esky instead of a fridge on a smaller two, three night trips. Um, yeah, pre-chill pre it, make sure everything that goes in it is cold. Use ice bricks, like um, not, not, not loose ice. Um, try not to open it too much, make sure it's in the shade. Oh, and get, don't get an Esky, get an ice box. So it should be called an ice box. Um, which is, they're much better insulation. An icebox should be heavy. Can you set up the annex on your cub by yourself? Next time, next time try a smash potato base. Huh. For pizzas. That's from Josh Lewis. Yes, I set up the awning annex thing on the camper by myself every single time. It takes eight minutes. And yeah, it's a, like, it's obviously takes longer than this, but it's not, it's not, it's fine. I can do it in the, I can do it in the, in the um, wind, all that kind of stuff. You just, it's just a process. Isaac Trekking Strayer, uh, favorite quick, cheap campfire dinner. Uh, Trafard, look up the video called Comfort, f f our, what we eat at home, our comfort food. That's my favorite. It's not very healthy, but it's just my comfort food and it's very inexpensive. JK Sars, how are people affording to buy 100K four wheel drives and caravans with all the best kit? Um, and how to, how not to make the mistake of constantly trying to keep up with the latest and greatest stuff. I think there's a really, it's really important to look at, no, don't look at the internet, look at caravan parks, and no, 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 campsites. Go and have a look around a campsite and look at the people enjoying the same view as someone with a $250,000 setup. For example, this whole setup is very expensive. I've also got a Delica. And that Delica gets me to the same locations 99% of the time, um, and it's brilliant. It just I, it can't do it as well with a family, but for me, and you know, say me and Sam, a four-wheel drive van is brilliant if you want comfort, space, all that kind of stuff. And that that thing cost me eight grand all up with all the mods and everything. It's probably under fifteen grand, um, and it's you know it's take it's that I could do a lap of Australia in that tomorrow. No worries. So. It's, I, I think it's, it's looking at what people can do and do do regularly as opposed to, um, yeah, influences. And I'm aware that I'm guilty of the flash setup because I really want it and because I'm a bit older and I've been doing it for a fair while um, and I have the means. Um, but I deliberately did the Delica to show people that you don't need it all the time. And also, there's nothing wrong with having a flash setup if you can afford it. Um, and if you use it a lot and enjoy it. I just want to say that as well. You should never feel bad for having a good setup. It's getting cold, I'm gonna put a jumper on. Whoops. Ugh. Good thing it didn't have chicken on it. What's the next question? Get out, go. When are you coming to the Kalahari for a braai? Right, as soon as I can. I'd love to get, a, get back over to Africa and collaborate with some cool people. Context, my dad is actually Zimbabwean. Um, and uh, yeah, and my cousin, who, sorry, his cousin, so my second cousin is a guy named Kingsley Holgate, uh, who if you're South African, you will know. So yeah, I've spent a you know, reasonable amount of time in Africa and, and love it, I have a real aff affili aff affinity for it and affiliation. So yeah, I'd love to, love to get over there. Um, just hard with kids and stuff, but we'll definitely make that happen at some point. Jack Burks, have you ever considered a Mahindra pickup? I've seen Ruthie's wife. Maybe it's maybe it's the go. Josh Dardo, advice for camping with new babies. Yeah, make sure you've got good temperature regulation. So if it's summer, make sure they can get cool. If it's winter, make sure they can get warm. It's also with new babies, it's hard to put blankets on them because of SIDS risks and stuff like that. So make sure that, yeah, they, they've got a way of keeping warm, whether that's with like some sort of a heater um, or having them 
you know, really close to you so you can share that warmth. And yeah, it's, it's a tricky one. It's a tricky one. So very good swaddling is crucial. Samantha Fischer. You better not be looking at rusty shitbox Delicas on Marketplace. Seems like more of a statement than a question. <laughs> I don't know who that bloke is. So one of the other questions I got was about the lithium battery, the lithium starter battery. So I've got an SSB battery from Marine Battery Co. Uh, as a starter battery, because my old one just died. And it's just, my battery gets a hard time, right? So my starter battery, it, it spends a lot of time, you know, cranking over at, 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 light, at camp. There are a bunch of like, underbody lights and stuff on the Prados that often run. Like every time you open the door, they'll turn on and off. And then just, I don't know, there's just like a lot of stuff. So I really wanted a much higher capacity battery, not to mention winching um, and just sitting places for a long period of time, as well as, and then, and then the added one is whenever it does start, it's often running like air cons and air, con air conditioned seats and then add to that all the spotlights. And then if you're driving at night and then you got, there's just a bunch of stuff that runs in my car a lot of the time. Um, as well as the red arcs, plural. So when I'm towing the trailer, it's got 60 amps of charge, 30 amps in the car, 30 amps in the trailer. My starter batteries cop a real flogging. So um, the I'll put the specs on the screen, but it was basically worked out to double the capacity of the, of the factory battery, both in cranking amps and in capacity. Uh, so they're both a 60 amp hour battery, but of course one's lithium, so you can use all of it and the other one's lead acid so you can use bugger all of it. What I did have to do, because lithium batteries sit at like 13 plus volts, I did have to put in a trigger wire for my Manager 30 in the back, in the back so that it would only charge when um, the engine was running. Because before that, because it was 13.2, 13.3 volts all the time, it, um, it was just constantly charging. Got to crisp up your sandwiches. But yeah, it cranks really hard. Um, I have treated it like crap and not charged it and left it and let it run the manager and all that kind of stuff um, to really give it, a, give it a hard time. I haven't tried winching and stuff yet. So look, so far it's working like a very good battery. Oh, go away Fred. More seafood recipes, please. I'd love to do more seafood recipes, but they don't get views. And unfortunately, I need to keep the lights on. There'll be specific recipes in the book, but less on YouTube. Oh, it's so good. New mod since the last review, which I think was at 18 months. Uh, so I'm gonna do a three year review soon, October. Um, but since then, new winch, different awning. And I went to the XT Max awning, a bigger one. And the other one uh, is, the, is the lithium battery. So. Oh, and I've changed my cell fire antenna from a Black Hawk to a GMA. Seems to perform a heap better. My Black Hawk uh, started off good and then stopped being good. So, yeah, see how we go. Mm. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. And don't forget to comment the code word down below.